guys, the day has come. The Mustang has returned, and I think it is done horsepower wise. Now, if you guys didn't see my shitty little reveal where I was playing Call of Duty and I was talking about the mods I plan on doing, if you didn't see that video, first of all, I don't blame you. Uh, let me let me explain what I had done to the car. So, if you guys don't remember, it was pretty much maxed out on boost for the top end. The top end couldn't keep up, or I was getting valve flow or something. I think the springs were too weak. And if I were to add any more, I mean, I probably could have incremented a little bit up, but it wouldn't have been worth it. So I pretty much had to upgrade my whole top end. So what I went ahead and did was I did full cam swap. I got comp cams, stage two blower cams, beehive valve springs, pretty much redid the whole top end, except for the actual castings. I didn't go and get them ported. I didn't want it to be sitting any longer than it already was. I still wouldn't have my car if I went and got them ported. But uh, I didn't do any of that. I didn't think the dollar per horsepower was worth it if I would have done that. So I just didn't care. Didn't care about that. And well, now it can handle a lot more boost. And on this pulley right now, it is currently doing about 21 pounds of boost. And let me explain why I went with this blower and uh, why I switched from my old saline blower. So if you guys don't remember, I used to have a saline supercharger and it was good it was a great blower got me straight to 500 wheel with like 12 or 13 pounds of boost but we were pretty much pushing it to its max and it couldn't handle any more so i went and upgraded to an f1a pro charger centrifugal supercharger and this bad boy has a much much higher max psi i think its max psi is somewhere around a 38 which is ridiculous crazy but it came with this Ferris wheel of a pulley right here. Like, look at this thing compared to this one. Holy shit. Anyway, this pulley was only doing about 10 pounds of boost, which wasn't gonna cut it. It was good just to get it, I guess, broken in, if you wanna say. I wouldn't even call it broken in. They're pretty much ready to go, I believe. So it was good for, uh, it was a good paperweight, but besides that, it was pretty much useless. So we went and upgraded to a 4.63 pulley, which is sitting right there. And that one got me to about 16 pounds, no, no, it didn't. That one got me to about 14 pounds of boost and I was still barely doing what the saline blower was doing. So I felt like I wasted a lot of money. My old shop said, just go ahead and toss an even smaller pulley on there and go E85 and you'll get your horsepower. So I went and bought this pulley, which at the time was doing about 26 PSI at 5K, but it would stop revving out. And I pretty much had spent all this money on E85, all this dumb shit. And I, I still wasn't able to drive the car fully. And they were like, okay, well now you gotta build your top end. So we took off this pulley, put back on that pulley. With fully 85, we went from, I think, like 500 wheel to like 515 with fully 85, like what? So the old shop was clearly screwing me over. So it was time to find a new shop. New shop got this pulley on E85 to about 600, 590, something like that. I forgot exactly what it was. I think it was 590 on that pulley, which was way better. An extra 100 horsepower, I'm not gonna complain. So I took it to the new shop to have them install the cams and this little rinky dinky pulley right here. And uh, when they got the cams installed, they were like, yo, so we saw a small pulley in the trunk. You want that one installed? And I was like, well, yeah, that's uh, that's my that's my gem right there. Look, look how sexy this thing is. This thing looks badass. And they were like, dude, either you're crazy or you have balls of steel because that shit is just gonna blow up your car. And I was like, what do you mean? And they broke it down for me and pretty much my max blower RPM is about 74,000, somewhere around there. And this one at 6,000 RPM, which it never even would rev to, would do well over 80,000. So we would have maxed out the pulley and then pushed it way but beyond the limit and probably blown it up if we actually fully dynoed it on this thing, which might explain why it wouldn't rev out before because the, the blower is just like, yo, what the fuck you want me to do? Just, <laughs> I can't spin any faster. And they later found that since I had had it on that pulley before and we did dyno test it before, we bent my harmonic balancer down there, which is really bad. That can set off a lot of shit. It can vibrate a lot of different components that shouldn't have a lot of vibration going through them. And it can ultimately destroy your whole crank and pretty much just kaput the motor. So we had to order a new harmonic balancer, which was obviously a setback and I wasn't too happy about it, but it wasn't their fault. It was the old shop's fault. So even when I stopped going to the old shop, they still continue to just rip me off. Anyway, we got the new harmonic balancer on there. We dyno tested it then, and it did 690 wheel, but it was cutting fuel pressure. We were losing fuel pressure, and we were like, what the hell, like what's going on? So we went and looked at my pumps, and my pumps were supposed to be a thousand wheel horsepower capable with E85, 
they just called it quits at 690 they were too lazy they didn't want to do it anymore so we had to upgrade pumps from a 340 lp to a 465 something like that lp so go figure you buy a thousand wheel horsepower kit and even that fucks you over so finally like a month later they get it strapped back down to the dyno i'm on my way already to go pick it up and they're like listen yeah it'll be ready today but I didn't even know what the horsepower was gonna be until I actually got there and saw the dyno sheet. They didn't tell me beforehand because they were still working on it while I was driving down there. This shop's a couple hours away. So I'm driving down there, hoping it's gonna reach the, the horsepower goal that I had set for myself when I bought the car. And when I started modifying it, I wanted X amount of horsepower. And we were really close at 690 anyway, so I knew we were gonna get it, but I won't reveal exactly what we got. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna get upset by that, but hear me out. Because if I'm down in Mexico having some fun, I don't want people to know exactly how much horsepower I have. I don't want them to just go ahead and, oh, let me research this guy and then let me talk shit to him, calling him out, and then gap the hell out of him because I have a thousand more horsepower, well, not a thousand, but I have a hundred more horsepower than him. I don't want to have to deal with any of that. And I do like having fun down in Mexico. And I think part of the fun is the whole ambiguity and the mystery of like, okay, well, how much horsepower does this guy have? How much horsepower does this guy have? I think that's part of the fun. And overall, I'm just happy. I hit my goal. I wanted over 700. We are over 700. So I hit my goal again. I think that's pretty damn good for a three valve. I know these cars probably aren't meant to go much faster because we're, we're pushing it. Sure, I can go and probably twin turbo it and get more out of it, but we're, we're pretty much pushing it. That blower can go ahead and get a smaller pulley, but I don't want to go and max out the pulley. I'm happy. I'm here. I drive it right now and it feels like a rocket ship. I'm just, I'm not, I don't want any more. I'm good. Not for this car. This car around 700. It's nice. And I understand if a few of you guys are upset by that and it doesn't mean I won't ever reveal it. Maybe if I, you know, if I'm asked during a live stream or something, sure, maybe I will because I won't be revealing it to the masses and it'll be a lot more hidden. But for now, I'm going to keep it a little bit of a secret. You know, I want to go out to Mexico. Go hand some unsuspecting victims the GAP, take them straight to Gapplebee's, get them an entree, and then send them home. That, that's, that's my goal. I want them to, to sell their car from my car. God, why am I so white? Anyways, let's go out and drive the car really quick so I can show you guys how it sounds. And uh, let me get a nice little idle clip right here. that we're back we need to talk about this wrap so on camera it looks good i think it looks pretty damn good on camera the problem is you guys see it through the camera and i see it in person and in person well it has some flaws and they're really starting to shine through all over the car we're getting little bubble areas like this this one isn't as bad, but let me show you where it is really bad. So I did wrap this myself and I'm not a pro, but for instance, we did mess up a couple times on this bumper. So we really had to stretch it. And this area down here is just not staying down anymore. No matter how much I heat it, no, and even if I heat it anymore, it's just gonna keep ripping. But no matter how much I heat it and try to just get it to stick, it's done. It ain't sticking anymore. So it's either gonna stay a little bubble or I'm gonna have to redo this, this half or something. I don't know, I, I gotta figure that out. This whole fender flare, this whole flare, is kind of bubbling up and it again it doesn't look as bad in camera oops i just tripped it doesn't look that bad on camera and it probably doesn't look that bad to just the average person but again it's something that i notice to where i see this bubble just stretching all the way down into just even like this area and it's like <clears throat> it probably doesn't look that bad on camera but it's something that I noticed is this little bubble that is just going all the way down and it's eventually just going to, it's probably going to eventually grow. I can imagine. I don't, I don't think it's going to stop. So again, another area that just I can't fix. I can't do anything about. And there's little areas like that all around the car. It might be the wrap itself. It might be how I applied it. I'm not sure. I know Vivid's wraps aren't the stickiest of wraps, but I didn't really expect any of this not this quick at least i mean i've only had it wrapped for about six months 
and I mean stuff like this where it's like come on it's like I'm come on so I had a plan to have it auto flex which is like a more expensive version of Plasti Dip it's supposed to last like seven seven years or so it's like a paint job you can sand and buff it to make it shine exactly like paint like it's pretty much a paint job but not as expensive and it's removable which is great and you're like well how does that even make sense I don't know I don't know the science behind it but it is it just works but that will run me a few thousand and I don't really want to shell out any more <laughs> than I have to since I just shelled out a, a huge chunk of change to get all these mods done so I'm trying to find the cheapest way to make it look decent and I think I found a solution but I don't know if I really want to do it I kind of want to try and it might sound stupid to Plasti Dip it myself. We've wrapped it myself. I've had it Plasti Dipped in the past. I think the look of Plasti Dip looks better than wrap, at least like this. I'm sure a professional wrap job would make it look a lot better, but I mean, it's not as clean as Plasti Dip inside the body lines and stuff like that. And I think Plasti Dip just, it's seamless. It looks a lot cleaner when done correctly compared to wrap when done poorly. You know, I think actually anything would look better than this right now because it's just, slowly falling apart so i have a couple colors floating through my head and um again i don't want to spend too much i'm not going to go with a crazy color shift or anything like that like i did before i want it to be more on the subtle side so maybe cops don't want to mess with me as much because if you don't remember when i first got it wrapped i got pulled over like the week right after i got it wrapped or you know it was like two days after i got it wrapped it was dumb i still had a fucking squeegee in my pocket and i got pulled over and i wasn't even doing anything so i might go ahead and try to plasti dip it myself they are having a giant sale right now so we'll see. The whole point of dipping your car is to do it yourself. I can take it to a shop and have them do it again. But again, that's gonna cost me a good thousand bucks or so. If I dip it myself, I'm looking at maybe four or 500 bucks and I'm done. And it would also be cool because you can see real results from a person that has some experience, but not much experience. And it'd be my first time actually dipping a car. So if you guys are interested in dipping your car, you guys can do it yourself too. So. I've already looked at a color that I kind of like, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna go with it yet and I don't wanna reveal it yet. Maybe once I order it for sure, just because, well, let's say I bail out of this idea anyways, then there'd be no point in revealing it. But I already have an idea and it's a cheap idea, but I think it'll look nice. So I don't know, that's just what's going through my mind right now because again, I think it would be pretty dope to see how it comes out. And I, I have pretty good confidence in myself and I think I know what I'm doing. So I think it'll come out pretty decent, but the only, the only shitty part is then I have to unwrap it re-stick these on and, and i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna go through it but i'll see i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to a few people and see if that's the wisest idea because i hate having my car not look 100 percent but at the same time it's not looking that bad but i mean look what i have to look at every day when i'm driving it's just like fucking peeling up there don't focus on my arm focus on that let me zoom in. it's just like peeling and it's just in your face like i have to look at that every day same with right underneath the hood right here every time i go and lift it I think it's getting worse and worse to where, yeah, it's just like peeling away. I don't know. Again, I, I, I kind of, I love the color. I do love the color. But at the same time, I, it might be time for a new color. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know what colors you guys might like to see. Again, I'm looking for stuff that's within my budget because I did just dump a lot of money into the car. So I'm not going for some hyper color shift or shit like that. It'll be a pretty basic color, but I think at the end of the day, it'll still look good. And it'll look better than how this thing does up close. So anyway... If you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up and comment down below a color or two that you guys might like to see on it and uh, well until next video peace